Welcome to this UniLogic tutorial. UniLogic is the complete application development environment for our Unitronics Unistream control platform. Hi, my name is Cara Barrick Levy, and I'm a technical documentation specialist here at Unitronics. This tutorial introduces you to UniLogic, the all in one programming environment for the Unistream control platform. You use UniLogic for all configuration and communication tasks ladder coding, and HMI creation. In addition to showing you UniLogic basics, this tutorial shows you aspects of UniLogic that can enable you to drastically cut your programming time. Let's begin by looking at the UniLogic environment with its intelligent design, logical organization, context-sensitive, and completely customizable environment. Everything is visible and logically organized. At the top, we have the ribbon, which has tasks that are not connected to programming, such as application download, upload, online, and more. On the left, we have the Solution Explorer. This organizes all of the aspects of your program into visible modules. You never have to search for anything. It's all there in front of you at all times. At the bottom, we have the Tag Database. The right-hand window is context-sensitive. This means, for example, that when you are coding Ladder, it will contain the Ladder Element Toolbox. When you are creating HMI screens, the top half will contain the HMI Toolbox while the bottom half contains Properties. More about those later. UniLogic supports Advanced Windows technology. This means that you can customize your working environment to suit your needs by pinning, docking, floating windows, and more. Just watch. Okay, I'm going to maximize my Ladder Editing area. Okay. Now let's look at data tags. Data tags are IEC 61131 compliant. They support lexical naming. Memory is dynamically allocated, supporting both retained and non-retained memory types. Very simple to define arrays, and they also have a property called scope, which we'll discuss in a moment. Tags are organized into groups. Right now we're looking at the system tags. It looks like a very long list, but look and see how easy it is to filter, simply by typing in a character. Click the tabs at the bottom to access other categories, such as global tags, timer tags, and IOs. Now let's create a tag of our own. When you create a tag, first you name it. Next, you assign a data type. Only the relevant types are going to be revealed. You can create an array simply by typing in a value and select whether or not it will be retained or not retained in memory. You can also assign a scope. Global scope means that the tag can be used throughout your program in both your HMI and ladder applications. Local scope means that the tag is confined to a specific function. It will be visible and available only within that function. This means that if your application requires, you can use the same tag names in different functions without any conflicts, or even export the function for use in another application. Here is the array that we just created. Let's link it to one of the elements. Okay, all done. Now I'd like to tell you about structs. Structs bring the power of C programming to your application. They allow you to group different data types into logical units, easily maintain program iterations. There are automatic structs that are created for functions such as communications, IO service, and for complex functions that you use in your application. You can also create structs and reuse them throughout your project. Let's take a look at one of the I.O. structs, a struct belonging to an analog I.O. module. I'm going to drill down. Let's open up the inputs. Okay, and now you can see the actual input assignment. Okay, now let's look at a struct that's been created to support a communication function. Let's add a modem. And there you go, down at the bottom, we've got the modem struct. Let's drill down. And here you've got all of the elements that you need to manage modem communications. 
But the best part of structs is the ability to create your own, basically creating your own data types. Here I'm creating one called user. I'm going to add members now. Okay, first the name. I'm going to assign that string ASCII. Now a new member. Let's add the ID number. Okay, and finally, let me add managerial status. Okay. The next thing that I have to do is declare the struct as a global operand. Okay, now I'm going to scroll down through the types, and oh, there it is, user. Okay, now I have an admin. Okay, that has all of the characteristics of the user struct. Now I will link the struct to a data table element. Structs actually provide the structure for data tables, but this is a subject for another tutorial. Okay, now I'm going to actually link one of the members, the ID. Okay. Ladder. This is the good part. Incredibly easy and astoundingly fast. Just watch it in action. This is being done using a combination of IntelliSense for the toolbox and keyboard controls in order to add the elements in. Drag and drop lets you place and snap anywhere. Addressing, easy as pie. See how we use the elements from within structs. Changing the type of element on the fly. This is all being done in real time. No drawing necessary. Fast, easy, and efficient. This will certainly increase your productivity. You can also use comments. Comments help you to structure a long application and make it a lot more readable. You can add comments to regions and comments to rungs. You can collapse them. You can also collapse regions. And you can assign a color to each region, which really can help a user. User-defined function blocks, or UDFBs, will save you a lot of programming time. This feature enables you to build your own functions and then reuse them. You can also export and import them between projects. Use local tags with UDFBs to avoid data conflicts. Okay, we're going to create a very quick UDFB. I'm going to organize them under a module. And this particular UDFB is going to add three values together. Here's a function in tag. Here's the second. And now the third. Now we need a tag to store the output. Function out. For the result, okay.
Okay, now we're going to include this into the program. We can do this via a call function. Simply enter the name of the UDFB, and there are the parameters. We can also simply drag and drop it into the ladder. Assign values, and these will go into the function itself. And the result will be fed out. There's a complete video tutorial about UDFBs. This is simply the tip of the iceberg. Communications in UniLogic are completely independent of ladder. You carry them out by configuration rather than programming. This diagram shows a Modbus configuration. You can configure a single PLC to be master, to be slave, and to also be multiple master and multiple slave. This would be a very complex ladder task, but it is a simple configuration task. I just want to show you very quickly the setup here. Okay, communications, protocols, Modbus. Okay, and here is the configuration for this particular controller. Okay, the master has two remote slaves, and there are two slave configurations. Well, click on one and you can see the particulars, the slave ID, IP, Okay, here on the slave, and here are the commands, the Modbus commands, that are linked to that particular slave. In addition to protocols, UniLogic offers SMS messaging, uh, emails, and a number of other communication methods. These are all subjects for separate tutorials. The UniLogic HMI editor, along with a free library of high-quality images, enables you to easily design professional-quality HMI screens. There is a complete tutorial devoted to the subject of HMI. I'm just going to show you some of the possibilities. The editor supports features that you'll be familiar with from other graphic applications. It's easy to align, rotate, overlay, and use transparency and opacity in order to layer elements. User controls enable you to display data and your user to enter it. Bar graphs and tanks enable you to display data in real time. Time widgets enable RTC display and editing. And the trend widgets enable you to display multiple data feeds. This again is the subject of an entirely new tutorial. This concludes this tutorial. We hope that this brief introduction has given you an idea of the rich abilities of UniLogic. You can find more information and example applications on our website. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you again.